Today I have a tutorial to show how to work with InDesign tables in a basic layout. So I'm going to recreate this table on this page. And the first thing I do is create a text box. I'm just going to show you some of the features of working with tables. Table, insert table. I'm just going to go with 10 rows, five columns, one header row. And if you already have a table style created, you can select that here. Okay. And I'm just going to type my information. I'm just going to copy my information. And you can see that that style was applied to this when I pasted this. And then I have this interior body information. So I'm just going to select all these rows. You just wait until you get this arrow key and then you drag and paste. And you can see some of the spacing and things need to be adjusted. And you can handle that with the table styles. So I'm going to adjust this now. I'm going to select all these lines. Select a no fill, a no, a no stroke. And then I'm going to create a body style, a table style. I'll call it table body too. I already have table body. You can create a cell, a cell style as well and apply it to this table. I can adjust the table spacing before and after, which I might want to do. Column fills, none. Okay, so click OK. And I'm going to adjust this to an exact height of 0.18 to get some breathing room and I'm going to create and I'm going to make this an exact height of 0.2 and I'm going to create a header style, a table style, table, header, two and All the rest of this is fine for now. Then with this table, this table is laid out, it's going to be laid out in a 10 by 18 inch sheet. So, and there's gonna be over a hundred rows. So in order to help make this a little bit more legible, I'm gonna add alternating fills. So I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna apply my table style, which is this table body two and apply this header style, then I can adjust it later if I want to. Table header two, select this, style, style options, and I'm going to go to the fills tab, and I'm going to select in every other row alternating pattern. And just to kind of separate it from this header, I'm going to skip this first row. There's some options here. I'm going to do kind of a soft fill, light blue, I'm going to do 10%. The secondary, you can select a secondary fill color for rose, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to select OK. And then you can see if you copy this information, if I add, if I add a row, um, key command, command nine. I'm going to add like 50 rows below this. I'll zoom out. But you can see that this alternating fill pattern be, will be much easier to read. And then I'm going to select my contents here. Paste it. So you can see how a table this size, whatever you can do to help make it more legible is a good idea because it's only 9.2 point and it's a condensed font. It's going to be a condensed font because some of this information is, is pretty wide. 
will take up a lot more room than others. For example, like the, the phone number, that won't take up as much room, so I can reduce the size of that and increase the description size. You could just drag. You can do that with the rows too, but I don't recommend it unless you want unless you want to change the height of just a single row. The best way to change the height of a row is to select all and to adjust it exactly here using the row height uh, field. Another thing you can do for the header is if, for example, I had a 0 0.25, 0 0.5, let's say 0.5, I could adjust Can adjust where it falls on the table but if I just want to add some space above it I can put it I can do I can just incrementally move it down using these this is really useful here the spacing the space the spacing fields And let's just say I want to make this slightly wider. I'll make this 0.9. And just get a little bit more breathing room. Another thing you can do with tables, this is a another key command, is if I want to just delete this one, I press command delete, it'll remove it. I could select an entire bunch of rows and just do command delete, delete them. I'm not going to do that. Another thing I could do is I can just select one row and then I can wait till this cursor changes to the arrow and I can move it up. So if you have, you need to quickly reorganize some of your, some of your data, you can do it that way. And it maintains this, this alternating fill pattern. So that's pretty useful. You can apply character. Another thing you can do is you can select rows or headers and you can apply character and paragraph styles. So for example, um, I'm going to create a different style. I'm going to duplicate this. See, um, two. And I'll just make it slightly larger. I'll do 10 point, 10 point 12. And I'll make it, no. I'll change the font. extra bold. I don't think that'll look very good, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change it a little more dramatically. Apply it. See, so you have that. And then you can go in and change it. It's always good to work with styles when you're working with tables because the data across pages can get pretty unwieldy and if you don't have style set up it makes it really difficult to change your information change the change the style of your information quickly so i'm going to change this back to light so let's just say i change my mind again client changed their mind and i'll just quickly change it back and Let's say, for example, I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a style for this header. Let's say new paragraph style header. That's going to be extra bold. I'm going to make this 10 on 12. It's slightly bigger. You can see it when I apply it. I'm going to edit it. I'll make it a little bit bigger yet. I'll make it 12 on 14. Okay, now it's larger. So that's my quick tip for today, how to work with InDesign tables. Please hit the like button. Thank you for watching.